Hey, Orangzeb. So what's new? Um, so recently, NASA announced that they may have discovered a planet, uh, Kepler-186b, which is in its parent star's habitable zone. And the habitable, habitable zone around a star is that region of, of space where uh, water on the surface of a planet remains liquid? Uh, correct. And also the planet has to be of a certain size. Right. And what is the implication of this liquid water and the size of the planet? Uh, so the main implication is that that planet can support Earth-like life. So that life can arise and, and evolve, uh, hopefully to, to intelligence, and then maybe develop a technical civilization. And given that there are about, what, 200 billion stars in our galaxy, mm -hmm. and then there are hundreds of billions of galaxies, and lately it seems that NASA has been discovering planets by the dozen, it seems likely that there is quite a lot of life around the universe, and at least some of those life forms should have evolved to intelligence and then to technological civilizations. So then, to, to ask the same question that the famous physicist Enrico Fermi did, where is everybody? Right, and not only that, but recently there have been some speculations from astrophysics, astrophysicists from Harvard that the conditions in the early universe were actually such that um, uh, life could have arisen much earlier, so only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. So that means that intelligent life in, in a corresponding manner could also arise in billions of years from now, wow. years ago. Yeah, that's very interesting because because the Earth originated about 4.8 billion years ago, right? And life on Earth arose about 3.5 billion years ago, whereas the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. So if, let's say, intelligent life came about, or, or life came about somewhere about 13 billion years ago, that's about three to four times as long as life has been on Earth. So you would certainly think that there'd be plenty of intelligent life and technical life around the universe. Uh, and yet, we have seen nothing. Correct. So that's the Fermi paradox. And there are different ways that people have addressed or found solutions or supposed solutions to the Fermi paradox. The one that I particularly like is that intelligent life is there and they're communicating with one another. It's just that we do not have the technological means to intercept their communication or even understand what they're communicating. So, so an example of this would be like, even today there are certain tribes in New Guinea uh, mm -hmm. that live in different valleys and, they, and their long distance form of communication with each other is the use of drums. This despite Correct. the fact that surrounding them in New Guinea itself and certainly around the globe, people are using uh, electromagnetic waves, uh, radio waves, uh, satellite transmission, and so forth to talk to each other. So you have two levels of technology coexisting. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and one set of users is unable to detect the mechanism, is unable to detect the signals that are used by the other technology. So I, I, so I, I, if I understand you correctly, you're saying is, that there may be uh, communication channels all around us, but we simply don't have technology that is capable of detecting those signals. Um, correct. And not only that, but um, so, it's, so it's more like uh, these forms of communication, they're just passing through them, but mm -hmm. they just don't know that uh, they exist. So for example, there's a famous humorous story, a uh, sci-fi story, um, by uh, this fellow named Bison, where the idea over there is that aliens detect certain artifacts built by humans, for example, the Voyager spacecraft, and they want to make contact with whoever made these artifacts. So then they come to Earth and they're horrified to discover that humans are actually made of meat, <laughs> uh, which is not the case for all the other intelligent life forms. So that's why they decide not to, to communicate with human beings. So that may actually be how a lot of these civilizations are. Right, so what one derives from this is that, that some of the civilizations may actually be, I mean, meat here signifies an organic Correct. life form, right? So these other civilizations may be in an inorganic form, which could be a machine-based form or something else, mm -hmm. presumably. And and their modes of communication are such, if I recall the story correctly, they actually were having, I mean, they couldn't talk, quote unquote, talk with the human beings. But that brings up the interesting point especially when we think about the, uh, our medical technology today. I mean, people have been using artificial hearts for 20 plus years. Uh, 
artificial limbs, uh, athletes are competing in the Olympics with artificial limbs, and the use of uh, art artificial eye lenses and other parts of the body are pretty common. So if we keep pushing this notion and extend it, it could be that some days our organic bodies could be replaced by inorganic or machine bodies. Or we could, who knows, maybe even upload our consciousness into computer networks, right? So, and it, it seems almost inevitable that civilizations will go down that path. So the organic phase for civilization mm -hmm. may actually be pretty small. If the civilization right. is, doesn't destroy itself first, of course, I and mean, there's always that danger. But if they live long enough, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe they eventually make the transition to a machine phase or an inorganic phase. And so if life, especially if it rose, uh, arose 13 billion years ago, <laughs> maybe all our neighbors who are capable of communicating mm -hmm. are actually in, in organic form. Uh, correct. So the main takeaway is that um, that our current forms could just be transitory forms, and mm -hmm. the default state for most intelligent life forms is that they are part, partly or completely mechanical. Mm -hmm. And from a communications perspective, that also kind of makes sense, especially given the vast distances of space. So, for example, if your nearest neighbor is a thousand light years away. Um, and if the civilizations, if these civilizations have been around for hundreds of millions of years, then even if it takes a few hundreds or thousands of years to communicate back and forth, it it may not feel like, or it may actually not be that long of a time. That's just how they communicate. Yeah, and of course, the, and one implication of this is that these uh, civilizations don't have groups that are fussing and fighting amongst themselves, so mm -hmm. that they're actually able to have a sort of coherent and consistent approach where they can send out a signal or, or and wait for its return and communicate over these long distances. And it may be that the individuals in these civilizations are long lived, but at least as a social structure, mm -hmm. there's longevity so that conversations that span thousands of years can take place. Correct. But but there's one other thing, right? I mean, if a truly advanced civilization can, can have other artifacts, just like in the story is this alien civilization discovered human artifacts, but our artifacts are on, on a scale consistent with our size, mm -hmm. right? We do things on the surface of the planet, but we don't actually engineer the planet or planets mm -hmm. and move them around or move the stars around. So a, a, a truly advanced civilization, advanced in this technologically advanced civilization, may be capable of moving stars and rearranging stars. Correct. And then we can take the analogy even further that they can not just rearrange stars, but they could even build things like Dyson spheres around the stars to harvest the energy of the stars. Right, that's a shell around a star that simply mm -hmm. surrounds it and, and traps all the energy. Correct, and then why limit yourself to stars? Maybe over the course of millions of years, they could build shells around galaxies. Wow, so maybe we should be looking for something like that. Correct, then it would make sense to perhaps look for uh, large-scale cosmic structures uh, which seem artificial. Right, so that means like the, the work being done by the telescopes such as Hubble and Kepler and other which is mapping the large scale structure of the uh, of the universe, if you begin to see something, hmm, this looks kind of, I mean, it's going in straight lines or it's organized like blocks or whatever it is, mm -hmm. maybe that would be an indication of some advanced civilizations uh, at work or mm -hmm. play. Correct, so then I guess we just have to wait and see. Well, I don't know if it's going to be in our lifetime, but you never know. You never know. And I hope all of you will be around mm -hmm. to see it, possibly. If not, at least come back for more speculation with Aurangzeb and I next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.